Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Just as I start speaking, my voice decides to crap out on me. Yeah! <laughs> Give me one second. <clears throat> there we go. Good morning, ladies oh, and yes. gentlemen. It is the 12th of the 12th. Uh, 12th of the 12th. Of the 12th. December the 12th, 2019. This is your fourth episode of The Scoop this week. My name is Graham Day and this man in the box. This box here, there, there, somewhere around there is the bib. Good morning, bib. <laughs> Good bloody morning to you all. I want to change my uh, nano leaf in the background because if I have it on the right setting, I can see this. It's pretty peaceful, but then I go, oh, let, me, let me just change to put Bibby on the shelf. Uh, there we go. But now if I go, Jesus good morning, Christ. everything starts going around. Uh, maybe, 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 maybe that one? Is it that one? Good morning! There we go. Every time I open my voice and say something, the nano leaf reacts to it. But then I stop talking. Lovely stuff. Things you love to see. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, anyway, forget the nano leaf. We have to be quick uh, through today's uh, installment of the scoop. We started a, a little bit late. It's about quarter past ten. Usually we last for around an hour. I need to be off for eleven because I'm jumping straight into a meeting. So today is going to be a fast-paced episode of the scoop, or so we Ooh. say, because me and Bib. We do like we do like a good chin wag. So oh we do so, oh we do. So we we'll, we won't talk about the fact that Baby Streamer isn't even last night, even though he did. You can check that out on the channel. We won't talk about anything else like that. Or yesterday's state of play stuff. What we will do though is we will talk about Twitch pushing back against Mix, as you can see there from the uh, title on screen. And I will bring the article up, the first article of the day, written by Sharif Saeed for VG247. He says, pushing back against Mixer and YouTube, Twitch signs exclusive deals with three of its top streamers. Twitch, uh, which had been the de facto live streaming platform uh, for years, had been the de facto live streaming platform, now has to work to ensure its top talent doesn't jump ship. Twitch has signed multi-year exclusive deals with Lyric, Tim the Tapman and Dr. Lupo. All three streamers revealed the news yesterday through official videos posted on their Twitter accounts. Their names should be familiar to anyone who frequents Twitch. Uh, uh, frequents Twitch. Even if you do not directly follow them, you'll often see their streams on Twitch's front page. Uh, this move isn't particularly surprising. Uh, Twitch has been bleeding major streamer talent for a little while now. The trend started with Nin Ninja jumping to Mixer, who was later followed by Shroud and King Gothalion. I don't, I've never known pronounce the name. Others, like Courage, went to YouTube. Uh, it's understandable then that Twitch is looking to skew the platform's top streamers. Lyric, Tim the Tapman and Dr. Looper aren't the only top talent on the platform, of course, so expect more deals of this nature to be made, either on Twitch uh, or competing platforms. Ice Cream Upload, sticking with Twitch. You've heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> uh, just going to hit play on this tweet uh, that's embedded. Um, um, the, the Tim the Tapman one's brilliant. It's... Uh... Obviously, because he's been around for so long, he's pretty much documented his entire six years uh, of existence on the platform with like a two-minute video. So it shows him like when he first started streaming, uh, the announcement of his first child and things like that. So he's kind of shown that he's grown up on the platform. He owes a lot to Twitch, so he's going to stay. His video is brilliant. If you've not watched it, I definitely suggest going to watch it. I haven't um, actually seen any of these videos. Uh... I haven't seen Doctor... I don't follow Doctor Lupo, to be fair. I don't follow Lyric. I only follow... Timmy Tenders. Um, uh, I like that guy. So I've recently followed uh, Lyric on the Ice Cream account just because uh, I'm intrigued at how someone can get 60,000... It was 75, actually. 75,000 concurrent people watching him play Uno. I was like, <laughs> the fuck? It wasn't... It was <laughs> like... It was uh, like... In that sort of two-week period where we had Star Wars and we had Pokemons and we had Sniper Ghost Warrior contracts... Hoodie on the door, you can't see him in the way. Sack it. It's over there. There we go. Just about. Uh, so yeah, we had all of that. Oh, you can see the actual mask there. So um, so yeah, we had a bunch of games coming out, but but in the same weekend, Lyric managed to get seventy thousand concurrent, seventy five thousand concurrent people watching him play Twitch. Bizarre. Uh, play Uno on Twitch. Bizarre. Um, but yeah, it's not surprising, and I'm uh happy to see it. To be fair, a lot of people I've seen, I have seen a lot of people commenting saying. Do you know what, Twitch is having to do that because, you know, everyone's coming to take their stuff. And it's like, we've spoken about it before. The Twitch having to do that. Well, yeah, they are, but why is that a bad thing? Uh, the, fact, the fact that Twitch can go and poach someone from YouTube because who streams consistently to the point where they are known for being a big name on YouTube? No one. Who streams consistently on Mixer that is cons uh, considered a world-class streamer? Uh, 
that's a bit of a shit comment. World class stream is very vague. As in one, uh, someone uh, trend setting, someone at the forefront of the game, someone that is a Doctor Lupo, that is a Tim the Tapman. Twitch can't poach anyone else. So Twitch reacting and signing deals with with Doctor Lupo, Lyric, Tim the Tapman is the only thing that they can do, and it shows just how far mm. ahead they are. That they got that their only act of recourse is to be all right, guys. Do you know what? We're, we're gonna. Make sure you all looked after and keep you here. They can't poach anyone else, so that's not a negative. But by Mixer coming in and poaching people, YouTube coming in, poaching people, it gives Twitch probably a much needed kick up the butt to say, actually, do you know what? Are we offering the best deals for our content creators? Uh, yeah. and, and that competition is only good for streamers. So it's not ever a negative for Twitch. Uh, I suppose it is because there'll be a few quid out of pocket, but they've got enough quids in that pocket to uh, see them through us as streamers that aspire to be uh, able to get 75,000 people watching this play Uno. The fact that there are better deals on the table now for people that have a little blue logo on this, uh, a purple logo on their streaming platform as opposed to a blue logo, I mean, that's, it's neither in or there. Uh, it's, it, it doesn't matter on your platform. It's, it matters about the quality of service that we are mm -hmm. getting as content creators and, and that level of competition just provides that. But it's just, it, for me, it's just about looking after the people that are making your platform great. And these three people, uh, from what I've known for the other two people, I said I don't really watch their content. But uh, especially watching someone like Timmy, yeah, it would be a, a disaster really losing someone like that. They've already lost Shroud and Ninja. Losing someone like him as well uh, wouldn't be great news. So it's good that they're actually investing in those people and saying, look, we think that you're one of the big dogs on this platform. Please stay with us. Please show the people why we want you why you should be on the front page because we know you're more than capable of carrying this platform as one of the faces of the platform. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, we've seen Dr. Lupo, we've seen Timmy, we've seen Lyric. All we need now is an extremely aggressive <laughs> streamer with dodgy hair well, and, and weird facial hair. But that's enough about Bibi. Dr. Disrespect should sign as well. Hey, you see. Well, it's, it's funny you should say that because for the last two days he's been on NDA things away from streaming, which he said that he was only streaming like two days this week because he's on NDA things. These three announcements have come through. Where is he at the moment? Who knows? It could be at Twitch HQ signing big multi-million dollar deals. Well, or it could be at someone like Mixer or YouTube doing a video with them. Who knows? I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I know that there's a lot going on in Twitch right now, as in as in this week, this last couple of weeks. Uh, myself and the Biberino, uh, we'll be attending the Twitch uh, Partner UK Christmas Mixer this evening. Um, so that's basically Twitch once again uh, high-fiving uh, the content creators on their platform. But as well as that, I know that there's been uh, partnership trips to places like Marbella over the last uh, week. Um, a number of UK streamers have been uh, saying that they've been there on behalf of Twitch rewarding them. Uh, I know that other content creators are doing photo shoot things as well. Um, so... Yeah, the Twitch definitely are doing a lot. Whilst we're not seeing much outside, I mean, that's just, it's like it's the duck analogy or, or an iceberg analogy. You only see 10%, but the duck analogy is, yeah, it looks peaceful on the surface, but the legs are going rah, 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 under the water. Yeah. And that's kind of what it is with Twitch. So, yeah, they might look peaceful. Oh, they've just signed a few people. Yeah, is that all they've done? Are they doing some massive campaign with yeah. the doc? And the doc's comments about them being uh, quite supportive and flexible to allow him to do his things with uh, his own uh, broadcast uh, uh show t tv show what was it uh, oh, mm -hmm. they didn't they want too much detail some of the animation or not but the docs say twitch have been uh, really well with it maybe maybe twitch are doing a lot more maybe they're <clears throat> they're going to kind of like blow things out of the water yeah. well arguably you could say that these three people have released videos because they couldn't make the party that there was that the, that may or may not be happening um with the likes of the doc being on nda stuff this week so they've just released a video to say we're staying yay but then the people who are uh, going to be at the party. Yeah, we'll be releasing like a you know like a YouTube rewind that they release every year, where yeah. they just bring the best of the best from the platform and make a little video. Maybe that's what they're doing. I have no idea, but either way, it's cool. It's about time. Let's get these. Uh, let's get these big content creators. There's a reason why footballers at the top clubs are getting paid the most is because they're the face of the clubs that are, are performing well. It should be no reason why platforms like this shouldn't be doing that for the people who are bringing in eyes to their platform and Absol making them money. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh I'm happy to see Twitch doing it. We kind of expected it. We've said it previously on the scoop. No doubt Twitch will be coming in and offering uh, improved contracts for those at the top of the platform. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's good to see them doing it. It's good to see it rolling out. And it's good to know that the platform that we've chosen to host the scoop on isn't going to die. Yeah! Uh, anyway, 
Anyway, enough of dying uh, and Twitch. We've told you that we will keep uh, strolling forward, keep pushing on. Usually we'd sit here for a good 20 minutes, get feet up, put kettle on, have a second brew as we start discussing the next stream <laughs> of uh, Twitch uh, personalities that are going to roll through. But not today. We don't have the time for that. Uh, so uh, our next piece of content that we're going to jump onto is... Uh, there we go. Uh, let me get rid of the discuss now because that's not relevant. I need to tweak that. Uh, whilst we bring this... No, this! There we go, this on screen. Yes, there we go. Uh, oh, get rid of it, make it a little bit. There we go. Forza Horizon 4 is getting a Battle Royale mode called The Eliminator. And this is written by Matt Wales for Eurogamer. And it's out tomorrow on Xbox One and PC. Uh, so, just give me one second. Well, just, just as a heads up, this was actually written yesterday night. Uh, so it's actually out today. Oh, okay. Uh... Just updating my discussing now slides so that anyone that jumps in a little bit late gets to see Falls of Four getting a BR. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. in news uh, that manages to be simultaneously surprising and also not remotely surprising at all, Microsoft has announced that Forza, 4, uh, Forza Horizon 4 uh, is getting a Battle Royale mode. It's called The Eliminator, and it's out tomorrow on Xbox One and PC. You're not allowed to say it like that, by the way. You're not allowed to go The Eliminator, because that's just... <laughs> it's The <laughs> Eliminator. <laughs> yeah. So it's out tomorrow on Xbox One and PC. The Eliminator, which comes to Forza Horizon 4 in a free update, pits 72 players against each other, uh, other as they thunder around Forza 4's open-world Britain, competing in head-to-head -head races in a frantic attempt to secure new pickups and faster cars. Initially, everyone is seated in their own 1965 Mini Cooper, but upgrades can be earned by locating car drops around the world or by coming first in a head-to-head -head race against another challenger. Once an individual race is complete, the loser is disqualified and the winner can either select an upgrade or steal their opponent's car. Uh, all the while, the arena boundaries are closing in. Uh, once they reach their final position, every remaining competitors must race to the finish line in a bid to be crowned the Eliminator. The, I mean, sorry, the Eliminator. Uh, so when the Eliminator go, uh, update goes live tomorrow, 12th December, that's nine days after Gray's birthday, by the way, just saying, uh, at 6pm UK, 10am PT, it will be accompanied by a special mini campaign and unlockable rewards. Uh, these include the 2008 Renault Megane R26R, uh, the 2016 Porsche 911 GT3 RS pre-order edition, and the 1970 Mercury, a Mercury Cougar Eliminator and a range of Eliminator branded clothing too. <laughs> uh, this is cool, you know. This is cool. I like what they've done with it. That's a, obviously, there's a battle royale. They've had to put a spin on it because they're in cars. You can't get out your car. Um, but this is cool. I like this. I wonder how long the matches are, though. It is. Do you know what? I, I, it annoys me. Let me just bring this cycle back up. I've just taken it off screen. Pezet, thank you very much for the host, Seth. How are you doing, Seth? Good morning if you're in the chat. If it's not a host, thank you morning, very pal. much anyway. Uh, I'll bring this article just back up on screen. Uh, so they say, um, the very first line, in news that manages to be simultaneously surprising and not remotely surprising at all. I hate that. Hate it, hate it. I hate the fact that yeah. that a company trying to, to deploy BR always gets hit with a, another BR. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, look at them trying to... What a surprise. Provide new opportunities for their user base. Trying to replicate success in their own product. I mean, what do you expect? That's what it is. Uh, hey, beautiful people, says Pezet. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, how's things set? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Uh, Fat Madev 8472 says, I wonder how many will try doing bits from the Italian job uh, <laughs> driving considering the minute. Probably all of them uh, at first, and probably not intentionally as well. Just going to go down these steps. <laughs> oh, okay. Fucking wipe out. But um, yeah, anyway, back to the... Uh, back to the... Uh, Eliminator content. I re I agree. I, re I really like what they're doing with it because one thing we've said a few times, uh, or I've said to you whilst we've been talking about uh, racing games in the past, is that I'm not a big fan of racing games. I don't play many racing games um, because they don't take me... Ugh, Probably the wrong choice of words there. They don't take me to new places. Well, te technically, that's exactly what a car does, Graham. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've, <laughs> I've been there. I've raced cars. I've uh, used all the cheats on Toka Touring cars uh, and uh, Gran Turismo one twos and whatever. And uh, the, the the undergrounds and so I've kind of got the point where it's like oh, it's just I've just done it. 
I've done it. But that kind of gives it a new angle to me. It's like you're adding yeah. the... Because you're not just playing against each other in races. You're playing against the environment, uh, the world dropping in, the random car drops uh, and things like that. It's just... Yeah, I think, I think that's pretty cool. It suddenly, for me, as... Um, a Twitch viewer, not a Twitch streamer, means that I'm interested in racing games. Uh, a lot of people are. I'm not. Uh, but that means that suddenly there's a little bit of narrative that I can get behind. It's not just mm. a case of who hit the right combination of uh, clutch, brake, gear change, and accelerating, and uh, the perfect racing line. All of that means a lot to people that are hugely invested in racing games. It's, it's huge then, not so much to me, but this as the narrative that I, as, as, as a guy that's not fully into racing games, can get me out, so I really like it. So, mm -hmm. uh, 100% Bibs will be streaming this on Ice Cream Uploads because that, that, that is just what Bibs does. All the games! Well, <laughs> I was actually thinking about this because we've got a spare Xbox, so I may end up borrowing it because it's on Games Pass, this. So it might be worth just digging into. It doesn't say whether or not it's pre uh, paid DLC, though. Is it just coming for free? Or do you reckon you have to pay for it? I reckon it'll be free. I would be surprised. Yeah, they, they haven't mentioned the price, have they? I'm going to hit the trailer and leave that playing because it might say it on screen as we're uh, sat here. Uh, I'll bring it up on screen so you guys can actually see it. Uh, so coming free to Horizon 4. Well, there you go. <laughs> 72 player battle. <panel. laughs> Five seconds in. Good time. Good lads. Good lads. <laughs> <laughs> it does look class, though. Oh, Subaru and Pretzel. Yeah. Way. Mitsubishi Lancer. Way. That's what I mean. It's... Again, it's just a nice little mix-up in it. I mean, I do like a good racing game, um, so yeah, I may end up borrowing the uh, one of the Office Xboxes to be able to try this out because I am definitely interested in uh, do you know playing what? through this one. Actually, saying that I'm I'm not really into racing games. Every time I've seen this, one thing that I do like about racing games, like when you're playing stuff like GTA, um, obviously that's not a racing game, but it has racing elements to it. Um, mm -hmm. what, the bit that kind of I enjoy about the racing part in GTA is, is the relativity. Yes, it's not um, it's not driving around Salford. Uh, I mean, everyone pretty much races around like they're in GTA anyway in Salford, to be fair. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's not that real world relativity. Uh, but watching uh, Forza Horizon and seeing like the E3 content where they showed you like was it in Scotland they were driving around or something like that, mm. um, and seeing like. British roads. I love that because uh, I'm. We always get to drive through San Francisco. We always get to drive through Los Angeles uh, or, or Tokyo or stuff like that. But just driving around Scottish Highlands, uh, decimating a sheep, you can't do that. At least I think you can't do that. I don't know. I'm guessing. Uh, we don't get to do that. So, so looking at that trailer, seeing the real world relative stuff that I can relate to looks badass. But then seeing uh, there's well, some actual animals running along at the start of the game. Whether that's just for dramatic effect. But then seeing that mm. that. Um, actually, one thing I do want to mention, I'm going to pause it right now as I bring this up on, on screen, is uh, get out of the way. The uh, the word, the lettering and the branding looks very Fortnite-y. Uh, so they've got their absolute real-world quality graphics in there. Coming free to Horizon 4, 72-player Battle Royale looks very fortnite -y. So I reckon they're thinking, yeah. okay, we can position this at, at the Fortnite crowd and get a little bit of uh, a little bit of attention, which is which is a good business plan. Absolutely. Well, I mean, uh, I've, I've, I've only ever played this once, and that was at Arcade Club in Glorious Xbox One X, I think it is. is that the, that's the best Xbox, isn't it, the X? Yeah. On that massive 4K, like, 55-inch, beautiful TV that they had. And I think it's like the opening mission where you drive through four different uh, four different locations doing four different things at the very beginning of Forza Horizon 4, and it was stunning. It was such a good game. The mechanics and the way that the car moves is brilliant. So yeah, I'd be very interested to see how this plays out. I'm definitely going to give it a go anyway. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I just I think will this, make you, will this make you get Xbox Game Pass? Because I bet this is one of the things where it's tempting. If available for free, it's tempting to get Game Pass to be able to try this out. There's there's quite a lot of um, there's quite a lot of things that are tempting me to get Game Pass, uh, Xbox Game Pass. So the fact that I can play Gears of uh, War four and five. Uh, that tempt, mm -hmm. tempts me, but there's a lot on there. Obviously, obviously, I can play PUBG, but I've got that already. Uh, but um, <laughs> surprise, surprise, surprise! It it does tempt me. It does tempt me. Um, it probably won't tempt me enough just because I have so much that is yeah. so big to play through before. I... Even for a pound, Graham. Uh, yeah, even for a pound, because because it's just I'm gonna use my one pound because use that pound is for people that have never used it before. What I'm gonna do is spend my pound now, not use it, and then when it comes to use it, it'll be like twelve pounds or whatever it is. Like, Fuck! <laughs> so, so I'm just uh, yeah, keeping all of it now uh, until I get to a point where I can. Uh, 
Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Yes. Fine. Uh, okay. You pad while I just update the uh, discussing now co content for the next article. Uh, uh, not a problem. Uh, Pesep saying, uh, Graham, do you ever just stay in that room and just to feel how beautiful it is? <laughs> uh, I do actually all the time. <laughs> You're not doing anything. Yeah. Uh, it is a stunning room. Um, you post, put if you haven't, if anybody hasn't seen it uh, and you can't see the whole of it now, feel free to go onto Twitter at Graham underscore Day. He posted a few pictures yesterday of different angles of his room. He's got a nice little fridge with some amaretto, iced coffees, and was it some cans of coke? Uh, coke, some iced coffees, and uh, a bottle of amaretto in there. Amaretto, courtesy of Mister Number One Pirate. What a guy. Uh, next gen renegade mr ice cream craig himself i said they've got the lego expansion too which i haven't yet tried oh that's interesting what so the cars are made out of legos that's weird uh they've got that's cool though. okay that, that's that's interesting as well interesting as well but uh we'll have to discuss that at some other point we're going to jump forward now this is a another piece of content written by the people and you gamer as i look up and up and up and there we go the TGAs, which is the Game Awards to you and I, I just didn't have that much space, so I had to uh, shorten it all down. So the TGAs brings 13 demos. These are indie demos coming to Steam. I'll bring the article up on screen for you guys now. Uh, actually, before I jump into that, I just do want to get back to set because uh, he obviously did ask the question. Uh, do you ever stay in that room just to feel and uh, see how beautiful it is? Um, yeah, I actually have to my left uh, a second chair which you can't really see uh, just in front of the fridge. Um, so yeah, uh, me and me and my better half have, have been spending increasing amounts of time in this room. So we've got plans to put maybe watch some stuff. I'll play some stuff in here. So yeah, 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 do. But anyway, the futon. Uh, I want I want a nice cushioned kind of seat like yeah, maybe futonish something like that. So that 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 is the plan. But uh, as you can see on screen, TGAs brings 13 demos to Steam. This is an article written for Eurogamer by Matt Wales, and he says you could play 30 uh, you play demos of 13 upcoming indie games, including System Shock, on Steam tomorrow as part of the Game Awards. Uh, so tomorrow marks the return of the annual Game Awards, and obviously tomorrow is today because this article was written yesterday, just uh, so you're aware the Game Awards will be happening uh at 1 a.m. Oh, there it is. It actually says it in the article, so I'll get down to that. Uh, so you'll find out what it's what it's happening soon. Uh, tomorrow marks the return of the annual Game Awards, and as part of the accompanying festivities, it'll be possible to play demos of 13 upcoming indie games, including the long-awaited System Shock remake, Skatebird, Carrion, and more. Uh, the Steam-based event, officially known as the Game Festival, begins tomorrow, 12th of December, at 6 p.m. in the UK, slash 10 a.m. Pacific time, and all demos will be available on Valve's platform for 48 hours before they whisk away forever, even if you've installed them. Hopefully, 48 hours will be enough to get through everything, as there's loads of interesting stuff on offer, including the Game Baker's cooperative uh, love story Haven, Night Dive Studios' much-delayed System Shock remake, Sundered developer Thunder Lotus, uh, uh, Cozy Game About Dying bit fairer and uh, be the monster 2d horror carrion and more the complete list as currently announced can be found below and i've included a trailer and steam description for each which will perhaps assist in finding the titles most of interest to you incidentally the game awards itself kicks off at 1 30 a.m on friday the 13th of december in the uk so there you go 1 30 a.m tonight slash tomorrow morning the game awards will uh, start and it will be live streamed on twitch mixer youtube steam and facebook and we'll be giving it the full coverage treatment here on eurogamer likely with hysterical caffeine addled glee so just going to run through the titles uh, uh, of the the games uh, featured in the uh, the demo is there an actual name of the what was it called uh, da, 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 the steam the, uh, Steam, the, game, the Game Festival, that's what it was, the Game Festival. Mm -hmm. So these are the games featured in the Game Festival on Steam. So there's Acid Knife uh, by Power Hoof, Carrion. Nope. Uh, nope. Uh, huh? As in you don't want to play Sorry, I'm, I'm just saying, uh, yeah, it's not something that I'd be interested in. Nah, okay, Carrion by Fo uh, Phobia and Devolver. Uh, nope. Hello, says Daniel Day in the chat. Good morning. <laughs> uh, Chicory, A Colourful Tale by Greg Lobanoff. No. Uh, the Drifter by Power Hoof. Yes. Um, Eastwood by Pixpill and Chucklefish. Potentially. Looks good. Haven by the Game Bakers. Uh, I've just watched the quick trailer on this and it looks cool. I'll have to see more of it. Okay, okay. Heavenly Bodies by... Is that Two Point Interactive? Yeah, it's, yeah, but it's, no, it's a no from me, Jeff. Okay, okay. Uh, Moving Out by SMG Studio slash DevM Games slash Team 17. 
Yes, it's a couch co-op game. You've got to give it a go. And Team 17 don't really do much badly. Absolutely. Well. Uh, one that I know and probably my pick because I actually really like it and, and it's 100% not my, my style of thing. Um, but as I've mentioned before, we've worked with uh, the lovely folk at CI Games slash United Label. Uh, um, is it United Label or is it United Ice? I, can, I always thought it was United. Anyway, um, so United, we'll call them that. Uh, so we've worked with them on Cyber Ghost Warrior Contract recently, and, and they are um, bringing Roki to the UK. And it 100% didn't look like my kind of game. I, the more I see of it, the more I think, okay, this actually looks pretty tasty. So Roki by Polygon Treehouse slash United label. Uh, I'll give you the, I'll give you their spiel just because we've got a bit of favoritism towards this one. Is Rocky is an adventure game inspired by Scandinavian folklore, a dark contemporary fairy tale underpinned by a touching narrative, alluring art style, ancient puzzles, and atmospheric exploration. Uh, Skatebird by Glassbottom Games. Yeah. We talked about that yesterday. Uh, probably not. <laughs> you, uh, could you say that that since it's a bird, could you call it Tony Hawk? I can't believe I didn't think of that one yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you slept on that one. Oh, I woke up sweating in the middle of the night. Oh my god! <laughs> just, just, I could have used that one. <laughs> Daniel there just chilled out at me going, Tony Hawk! I mean, uh, what? <laughs> what? What? Uh, back to sleep. Shh. Okay, Spirit Fairer by Thunder Lotus. Uh, probably not, though. <laughs> Spirit Fairer is a cosy management game about dying. <laughs> okay, that's a pass from me. Uh, no, maybe. Super maybe. cosy. <laughs> <laughs> System Shock by Night Dive yes. Studios. Yes! <laughs> I've been waiting for this for a million and one years. Like, I've never played the original, but a bloke who I used to work with was like mad on these games. He's like, you like survival horror games and you never played System Shock? What are you, a mentalist? Um, but the original uh, System Shock 1 and 2 are on Steam for next to nothing at the moment, so I will end up picking these up. But I've had a look at the trailer, um, and it hasn't got any survival horror elements on it at the moment you're just kind of just walking around uh, the ship that you're on uh, but yeah this is definitely a game they're, uh, they're rebooting it they're remastering it it looks beautiful I want to get into this uh, just wanted I brought baby on full screen because do you know that that thing that all s scabs including myself do when they get really excited and they go Bibi went, yes! And it looked like he was either about to do that just off screen or, or angry, angry wanker ghost. Either way, he was he was enjoying yeah. uh, System Shock. So there you go, Bib. <laughs> there you go. Uh, next one. Uh, Wooden Nickel by Brain and Brain. No. Uh, poor Pinky. Absolutely mugged in that situation. It's Brain oh and God. the Brain. Uh, anyway, so 13 demos available to play uh, on Steam are they there as as of now? Uh, uh, okay, six, six, so. six p.m. tonight is when the game festival yeah. begins. So the game awards is at one thirty a.m. tonight slash tomorrow morning. Um, but the game festival, well, those twelve demos hitting Steam, starts at six p.m. tonight. So uh, yeah. There's a very small part of it that's devastated that we couldn't do a watch along with this, but I'm also absolutely over the moon that we're going to be smashed out of our bonces by the time that this starts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, you know what? Is, we're going to a Twitch do. We might even be sat in a bar somewhere watching the Game Awards. Watching it. <laughs> <laughs> with all the rest of the nerds. Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll do a live scoopage at half past one in the morning. Oh, we've got, we've got 17 amaretto sours around us. Uh, and I'm not talking about the drinks. Twitch ladies. Terms of service. Twitch terms of service. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's Bibby. He's not, not snorting tequila. It's fine. We drink responsibly, kids. <laughs> uh, I apologise if this doesn't look... It's okay. I'm trying to buff. I'm trying to buff out. I'm I trying to pad. And I, I was... think you're updating the title as we speak, aren't you? Yeah, but I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> apologising because I don't know if this is actually going to fit in the text box. If the text overrun, this is just this is one of those working on the fly things. So let me just see. Uh, oh no! <laughs> Resident Two remake well, is so more than no, that's original. Ah, oh, okay, it's close enough. Uh, okay, I sold. Lots. <laughs> Done. There we go. Resident 2 Remake has sold lots. This is the next. 
news <laughs> article. Uh, perfectly fits. What we can say, creativity. For those of you listening on the audio services, because we didn't do any of that stuff in the intro, uh, do you know I'll, I'll do it quickly now. So we are live on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. We give you this uh, video podcast where you guys can interact with us live. We then turn it into an on-demand video podcast that we upload to YouTube around an hour after the show finishes. We then upload it to four audio services as well. iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play. You can listen to us right in your logos on all four of those. So if you are sat there now listening and thinking, what is he talking about? Well, in yesterday's stream for the first time, we added a discussing now slate. So when someone drops in halfway through a story and they go, uh, what are we talking about? They don't even need to ask the question because it says on screen, uh, discussing now. However, because that's new, we've still got, you know, just to see it working in a live situation. So it says discussing now, and then there's basically a bit where I can type in. Um, so I put residue remake because that's all the original, but that was too many characters so that it was just basically bleeding over the line. It now says, Resi 2 Remake has sold lots! <laughs> so, yes, <laughs> yes, very well, very descriptive. It works, it works. It does the job. Uh, so, jumping into Resi 2 article, uh, as you can see, this is written once again by Matt Wales on Eurogamer. Uh, Busy boy yesterday, how, Matt? Oh, well, this one is today, so, so yeah, it's all right. You're not that busy, Matt. One article a day. God. Um, <laughs> I'm not joking, Matt. We'll be right. Uh, Capcom's. Oops, losing my voice. Capcom's. Oh, resi- here we go. <laughs> have, you, have you seen The Simpsons? If I had a girlfriend, she'd kill me. That like nerdy dude. Yeah, that, that's what it sounds like. So Capcom's Resident Evil 2 remake has now sold more than the PlayStation original. Sales surpass five million. Just want to say that David said narf in the chat because he. I was talking about Pinky in the Brain. So GG. Uh, according to new figures released by Capcom. This year's superb Resident Evil 2 remake has now sold more copies than the PlayStation Original's lifetime sales. Squirreled away in Capcom's uh, Capcom Japan's release date announcement for the freshly unveiled Resident Evil 3 remake is word that, as of 4th of December 2019, the acclaimed Resident Evil 2 redo has sold more than 5 million units on PC, Xbox One, and PS4 since launching in January. By contrast, the, the original Resident Evil 2, which initially released in January 1998 on the first PlayStation, has sold 4.96 million units according to Capcom's official figures, placing it at number 7 in the publisher's list of best-selling titles. Even so, despite the Resident Evil 2 remake's undoubted success, it's still somewhere behind other entries in Capcom's enduring survival horror series. The publisher's most recent figures, correct as of September 2019, reveal that 2017's excellent Resident Evil 7 has sold 6.8 million units, uh, while Resident Evil 6 uh, scored even higher with sales of 7.4 million units on original release, not including newer versions. 2009's Resident Evil 5, meanwhile, sold 7.5 million units plus, uh, making it the best-selling entry in the series so far, and Capcom's second best-selling title ever. The number one spot, if you're curious, goes to Monster Hunter World, which has so far managed to sell 14.1 million units. In contrast to the 4.96 million sales success of the original Resident Evil 2, its follow-up Resident Evil 3 Nemesis only managed a comparatively modest 3.5 million units on PlayStation since its release in 1999. As such, it'll be interesting to see how the Resident Evil 3 remake fares in comparison when it comes to PS4, Xbox One and PC on the 3rd of April next year when Bibi will be streaming it live on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream upload. Uh, so while the original might not be the most beloved entry in this series, anything could happen now Capcom has revealed its multiplayer mode, which features a character called Martin Sandwich. <laughs> what a way to end the article. Martin Sandwich! And stop. But that's kind of an ode to the original Resident Evil. Uh, there's a bit where Barry saves Jill from a roof that starts to collapse when you take the shotgun off the off the wall. And one of the most cheesiest dialogues in uh, Resident Evil history uh, it was Barry <laughs> saying to Jill that she was nearly a Jill sandwich. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it was very cheesy. Uh, but they had, in, in De- which Dead Rising was it? Uh, another Capcom game, a Dead Rising one, there was actually a shop in the in the mall called uh, Jill's Sandwiches. Um, so, yeah, it's it's just a little old thing, a uh, little nod to a good old Martin there. Um, but, yeah, it's interesting that the the games that were seen as the action games from Resident Evil are the ones that got sold the most. Resident Evil 4 was apparently the best Resident Evil ever, which to me is not even close. Uh, that was so much more action than I was ever wanting it to be. As a survival horror fan, it was a million miles away from what I grew up with and what I enjoy in a survival horror game. That uh, didn't even make this list uh, with numbers next to it. So Resident Evil 5, Resident Evil 6 were heavily, heavily action-orientated. 
Uh, good co-op games as well, to be fair. I actually um, <clears> missed single player what, what yeah. game you were talking about there. Which one doesn't make your list? Uh, uh, Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4, okay. Yeah. Uh, which one? Was that the one that they said is the highest selling of all time? Uh, on, uh, no, uh, it was uh, 6, was it? Uh, Resident Evil 5 sold 7.5 plus million. Yeah. Uh, yeah, see, it's interesting. I don't, I don't know much about Resident Evil uh, in terms of which ones are good, which ones are bad. I know roughly and very, very loosely the premise. Uh, don't know anything about the, the characters, so I didn't even know there was a Mr. X until maybe started playing through um, Resi 2 on the channel. Uh, I know Nemesis just because the game was called Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, was it? I believe it was. Yeah. Uh, so, But yeah, I knew there was a Jill Valentine. I don't know who Crazy Hair Dude was. Uh, Carlos or whatever, or something yeah. I've heard said since then. Um, so yeah, a lot of it didn't know. But one thing that I would have said is that Resident Evil 5 uh, wasn't considered the best game in the series. I mean, is that... Is that yeah, so it's interesting. Maybe... I did enjoy 5 because it was as if... I'm sure it was the first one main stage not outbreak because that was co-op as well but i'm sure this was the first one where you could play with a friend as a co-op partner um revelations came out after that outbreak was the multiplayer version before and so i'm guessing I, i'm sure this is the first one where if you wanted to play with me we could sit next to each other and play or we could play over xbox live or playstation back in the day or whatever um but resident evil 6 was the same it was very action orientated you can play it the best way to play both of them games was with uh, a, co a, a human, a human um, co-op partner because the AI was fucking trash. Shaver in five was probably one of the worst characters I've ever seen in Resident Evil. Um, she was just shit. She was basically, just you could give her the best gun in the game and she'll still find a way to die and just be absolutely useless, just waste bullets. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it surprises me that two was so far down the list. Again, that is my favourite. Um, but you've seen that the remake has done extremely well and i sold the original one with the way that that went i can see the third one out selling it the amount of hype now compared to what <clears throat> was happening when resident evil 2 remake was announced the hype for three i mean it's been trending nearly for three days now since it's um in fact it's even been trending longer than that since the um box art got le leaked last week we've not stopped hearing about it um which yeah, because maybe that just won't shut up <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, get ready for your boss because we're going to be doing this till April. <laughs> uh, I think there's probably a few things there. The fact that when something's good, you always get anticipation for the second. And if the second one's good, then it's like, oh my God. So obviously, mm. Resi 1, 2, and 3. The fact that that was building up to 5. Um, also, 5, 2009, it says in the article, that's three years into yeah. the PS3, Xbox 360 life cycle. So that's a good time to have a release there. You've got huge install bases already. So those that probably all ties into the fact that there was 7.5 million units. Uh, then from then, it seems that things started to drop off. Uh, uh, what was six? It said Resident Evil... I can't. Six sold well. Um but not as much. So there's been a slight decline. And I think, even from my perspective, Resi got to the point where it, it stopped being something to celebrate. It started to get... Mm. It, it was kind of samey. Uh, to the point where the, the, one of the most memorable things I remember of Resident Evil 6 is that the logo looks like... Uh, was it someone sucking off a giraffe or something like that? There was like <laughs> yeah. there, there was a meme going around, and that's the only thing I remember about Resident Evil Six. Uh, so Resident Evil Seven coming out, that kind of hit everyone by surprise, as in like, oh, Resident Evil's back again. It's doing cool stuff. So then Resident Evil Two comes out. It's like, okay, it's what I remember, but better. And so that time you've had yeah. two releases back to back where people have thought, okay. Resi's going somewhere now. And we're keeping up with that nostalgia train by bringing out Resident Evil 3. So, oh my god! So yeah, I think I mean, this definitely has a good shout of beating the 5 million units that Resi 2 sold. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, if it if it carries on with this level of momentum that you've been talking about there, babe, I reckon yeah, getting 7.5 million plus is, is easy for Resident Evil 3. Well, once this one comes out, this is a little bit of trivia for you. Once this one comes out, every single main stage Resident Evil game with a number, uh, barring seven, because it's just come out on, uh, well, let's say it's just come out, it's now on PS4, has come out for the PlayStation 4. There is a version of each one on the PlayStation 4. Interesting. You heard it So they had the remake one, the Resident Evil one that's got ported to the PlayStation 4 with the high, the HD version, Resident Evil 2 has had a remake, 3 is getting a remake, 4 has been ported over to the PlayStation with 1080 graphics, 5 and 6 have done exactly the same, and then Resident Evil 7 has come out officially on the PlayStation 4 as a main title. 
Logic bomb. Bang. Bang, bang, bang. But that's enough of the uh, Resident Evil story. <laughs> just needed to hit, hit the bell there. You can see that I'm uh, feeding into something else as Bibi now just talks casually to you on stream while I do something off stream. <laughs> well, well from, a, from one set of massive ding, ding, dings, we're going to move over to another set of ding, ding, dings. And if anybody can guess before what this ding, 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 ding is before Graham starts talking about the ding, 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 you will win yourself. Guess what? A Christmas five. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Okay, ding dings inbound as we talk about our next news story. I'll jump over this way. And there we go! Discussing now, PUBG gets bloody. Uh, so this is an article written by Sharif Saeed for VG247. I'll bring that up on screen for you right now. It says PUBG gets bloody in new updates. So the last PUBG patch for 2019 is here. PUBG just received patch 5.3 on the game's test servers on PC. And this is one of the game's least interesting as far as new content and features goes. Uh, so the update's biggest addition is a new blood splatter system. So the benefit of the new and improved effects is twofold. First, shooting an enemy's head or neck will now produce a distinct effect that's different from a regular body shot effect. Uh, the advantage to this is that blood will now stick to walls and floors. Uh, the other advantage to this is that now blood will stick to walls and floors whenever a player gets shot near them, which adds to the grim atmosphere of PUBG. Uh, blood will also be vi uh, visible on the player's body to indicate which areas have been shot. I mean, yeah. blood being visible kind of exists already but that blood splatter and and staining the local environment hasn't so that's pretty cool uh another neat addition is today's update uh today in today's update is the ability to upload your game settings to the cloud which fucking is amazing as far as i'm concerned so the backup is tied to your account it can be downloaded anytime uh, you use a new pc everything except graphic settings uh, and the inventory character render option will carry over the recently promised update to the create and key system which we covered previously on the scoop uh, also arrives in today's patch that basically means that going forward, you'll no longer receive lock crates when using battle points to buy them. As part of this, PUBG Corp are just a drop rates for the various existing crates. Uh, update 5.3 hits live servers next week uh, and will land on consoles shortly afterwards. So it'll be about two weeks That's after. Cool. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, nice quality of life cool. updates. I like, I like seeing. Absolutely. Uh, uh, next Gen Renegade says, Smash PUBG two years ago. Uh, for about a year whilst it was in preview mode and playing it, uh, playing it whilst everything will render like a potato and now all the updates are coming in when I don't play it more. Sick of it! <laughs> Jeroon, thank you very much for the eight month subscription. Uh, uh, that was very, very loud in my ears. So if you guys are listening on podcast services, then do you know what? Celebrate the fact that Jeroon's just celebrated his, his eight month subscription in a row. Uh, cheers, Luke. What a guy. What a guy. Uh, and it's just, as a result of that, from the Ha Ha Holiday campaign on Twitch, uh, Jeroen Sub just gave out five rewards to others in chat. So Craig has just got a very Jeroen looking Ha Ha 2020 emote. So there you go. That's what, that's, that's, he's given the love tonight. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, uh, that emote looks like Jeroen, <laughs> says Craig. I just said the same thing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, yeah, that's the thing. A lot of people did that. A lot of people played PUBG. I keep leaning behind uh, the screen. So a lot of people played PUBG when it was a bit pants. Uh, a lot of console players don't understand. Uh, and we've spoken about this on, on the scoop before. Early access is, is something that's, that's more accepted to PC players. PC players are more accustomed to it. Console players are very much rage quit. If you start a game in early access and it's not perfect, what the fuck this shit am I? Boom, that's it, I'm gone. Uh, and then loads of Fortnite again because he's, he's always an angry 12-year-old kid. Mm -hmm. I, mean, it, I mean, it could be anyone, anywhere, or a he or a she, but it's always a 12-year-old little boy in my mind that's stropping somewhere because that's because that's my go-to uh, bias. But anyway, um, yeah, a lot of people will have played it when it was pants, and the fact that the quality of life upgrades keep coming, uh, they keep adding new stuff in, which then takes it back a little step, so it's kind of like uh, two steps forward, one step back two steps forward so they'll be like okay huge yeah. new stuff but the menus are a bit slower then they'll fix that and then they'll add more huge new stuff and then something else will stop loading in as quick and so <laughs> so uh in a live service game where they're making such sweeping uh changes to a game that was never intended to be as big as it is um then i'm happy enough with that uh and it's it's all good learning because when we finally get to pubg 2 uh then yeah it's all right well everything's gonna load in there's gonna be no lag whatsoever and graham's gonna be 76 but he's still gonna be playing pubg all day every day <laughs> that pubg 2 by then pubg 2 graham day 76 uh i'm gonna have my own skins in pubg 2 calling it now just saying just saying just saying just saying but anyway uh so we've spoke pubg ding 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 we spoke 
Resident Evil, ding, 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 ding. I don't know what tune that is. I just started going somewhere. And, uh, yeah, we've spoken about the Game Awards, which is tonight, 1.30 in the morning, so make sure you check that out. Obviously, that will be a big feature of our episode of The Scoop tomorrow. No doubt we will run through the awards uh, as Hideo Kojima yeah. gets 27 of them because Jeff Keighley just wants him to get 27 of them. Uh, there will be a number of game announcements. Obviously, it, Ghost of Tsushima is almost nailed on to be there. Most likely something yeah. from Warner Brothers 2. Uh, so potentially Batman, potentially uh, Harry Potter, one or the other maybe, maybe both, we never know. Um, but we will bring you all of that uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m. on The Scoop. Full disclosure, ladies and gentlemen, myself and Bibby are going to a Twitch party tonight that is taking <laughs> place in multiple bars. So don't expect lots of energy on tomorrow's edition of The Scoop. Just saying that right now. And when we always say we start at 10, today we start at quarter past. Quarter past would be an achievement, I'm, I'm guessing. <laughs> so. Oh, God, I'm, I'm so looking forward to it. <laughs> so there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the scoop for today. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Bring that. I, I didn't realise I was on the screen, but I can get rid of it. Bye. Uh, so that's it. That's it. The scoop is done for today. Four days down. Obviously, this is we're only hitting forty-five to fifty minutes ish. But we, you know, we've got to get things done. We've got meetings. I've got a meeting that starts exactly now. So we're gonna wrap <laughs> it up, ladies and gentlemen. Anything you want to add before we do that, though, Boop? Uh, yes. Uh, again. I say this every single day, right? And we did get someone who typed something to us, which was Shogun. I'd love to be able to discuss it, but I think the terms and service would probably stop us from doing so. Um, so if you do see anything knocking about on social media that is acceptable to be talking about on stream, then feel free to tag us in and we'll give you our opinions. Um, but yeah, until, until next time tomorrow, guys. <laughs> hopefully you might see me in some sort of condition and Graham may be able to talk. Uh, who knows? But it should be a fun stream. <laughs> One thing I do want to say is, is I'm just going to go and use my PS4, Shogun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, anyway that is it, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We, well, do you know what? We can actually say what it is. The PS4 is the most used, uh, one of the most used platforms, or the most used console for watching Pornhub. Pornhub tweeted yesterday. It was shared across the industry. So there you go. That's why Shogun only plays on PS4, and that's why I've stopped using my Xbox to play PUBG. So there. <laughs> but that is stop me from using anybody else's PlayStation pad. <laughs> why is, why is, yeah, when you see the pad and it's got that like that hand goo, the grey brownish stuff. It's like. Is it hand goo? <laughs> Why is the circle stuck down? It's a bit... <laughs> I'm late to the show. What's this about PUBG? PUBG gets bloody. There is a new update that's hitting PC servers, uh, test servers. Uh, that's hit already, actually. Hit yesterday, and then it will be on live servers next week, and then be on consoles uh, about two weeks afterwards. Basically, uh, when you hit somebody PUBG, they will bleed, and, and the blood will split onto the floor, and you get different blood splatter patterns for different parts of the body. But that is it. Thank you very much for joining us. Even though it's at the very last second, Biggie Chim, we are just about to uh, jump off because Sorry, we're over overrunning for a meeting. Um, but yes, that is it. We will be back 10 a.m. tomorrow. Luke will be back before then, though. He is playing Life is Strange on the channel. Do yourselves a favour. Go to Twitter, type in Ice Cream Uploads and go in there. We are working with the lovely, lovely people at Square Enix to give away a copy of Life is Strange 2. We have a PC key that we will give away to one person. The reason we're doing that is because we're going to play through Life is Strange, uh, both games on the channel. I believe both games. I believe both games. It may just be two, but I believe it's both. Either way, we're playing through the games on the channel. I say we. Luke is Jeroen in the chat who's just dropped his own emote. Um... He will play through the games this afternoon, and we're doing that to raise awareness for Centre Point, a charity that that looks after um, in simplifying it, young people that shouldn't be on the streets. I believe it's sixteen to twenty-five year olds that are are living are living rough, sleeping rough. Obviously, that ties in a lot with Life is Strange. So the lovely people at Square Enix uh, are working with Centre Point to push that forward. So as Luke says in the chat, three p.m. This afternoon, join him for some Life is Strange 2. Life is Strange 2, there we go. Not not the first one. Life, just the second one, because, you know, that's that's the one that, that everyone's looking at right now. So we're going to be playing through Life is Strange 2 on the channel today and tomorrow, and then we'll continue that next week. So, uh, yeah, make sure you tune in for that. Luke will be there at 3 p.m. Me and Bibby will be in a state at 10 a.m. tomorrow. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Until then, from me, from Bib, let us know everything that you see on social media at Ice Cream Uploads, and stay frosty.